uh, they were told that it was against the law. They were told that Ireland was a Catholic country. And now in this Catholic country, a 31-year-old woman is dead. Um, I think many pro-choice activists have said for many years, have warned, have feared that something like this could happen. <laughs> Because since 1992, since the X case, we have had over 20 years of inaction. And it's not that there has not been opportunities to do things. There was a referendum in November 1992 when, when the citizens of this country reinforced the X case ruling. There was, um, five years later, another woman was dragged through the courts, Miss C, in 1997. There was yet another referendum in 2002 in which another referendum upheld the X case decision, and still we had no action. Then in 2007, we had Miss D, no action, no legislation. 2010, Miss A, Miss B, and Miss C, and the ruling from the European Court of Human Rights said that the government must clarify the legal position and legislate. What did they do? Nothing. And instead, they hid behind an expert group. And that expert group was supposed to report in July, no report. It's supposed to report in September, no report. And today, we're still waiting. We're still waiting on action. And unfortunately, Savita is not the only person who has died in this country because of the restrictive and repressive abortion laws. If you remember back in 1983, um, a woman called Sheila Hodgers, who was pregnant and was refused cancer treatment, and died, and her, uh, and her premature baby also died. Michelle Hart, a woman who was suffering from terminal cancer, uh, was recommended to have an abortion by her doctors, was denied that right in this country, and a terminally ill woman was forced to travel abroad. There are so many stories and so many tragedies that, we're, um, that we can remember here tonight. And I think the reason that so many of you have come here tonight is that we, what we want to see this never again, that this can never, ever happen again. And we are calling on the men and women behind us in the doll, the people who are supposed to enact legislation, who are supposed to protect their citizens, to act now. And we're here, I think, tonight to tell them that we will not, um, we will not tolerate any more delays. We want immediate action this week on... Um, couple of speakers. Um, our first speaker is, is Sinead Redmond, and uh, Sinead is a very inspiring woman who, um, after the horrific and offensive youth defence posters went up over the summer, uh, began a campaign um, to, uh, began with a Facebook campaign, unlike youth defence, I trust women to decide. And that spiralled into the very um, inspiring March for Choice um, earlier, uh, earlier this year. So Sinead's going to begin. Hello, everyone. First of all, sorry if you can't see me, I myself am heavily pregnant, so I can't really stand on the thing. <laughs> um, Savita Halapanavar is dead unnecessarily, and we are all complicit while the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution remains in place. Civil and criminal law has no place in medical decisions. This woman's medical team could not treat her. Legislation for X, while we have been waiting 20 years for it, is not enough. Legislators and politicians do not have any place in medical care. Women, their families and their medical teams know what they need. Savita and Praveen, her husband, knew what she needed. They requested an abortion three days before the fetal heartbeat finally ended. She was finally transferred to ICU and died suffering and in pain, avoidably and preventably. We knew this was going to happen, but nothing was done. We can't allow this to ever, ever happen again. Yeah. Yeah.
Sabita didn't have to die. More women can't be allowed to die. Roll back the lie of the pro-life amendment and allow women to continue to live their lives without interference from state, church or legislators. So I'd like to remind you to join the protest um, beginning on Saturday at 4 p.m. in the Garden of Remembrance. We're also encouraging people to bring candles um, as well to that protest. So just because there are so many of us here and to continue remembering Savita and the other women, we're going to ask people maybe just to sit down outside the door for five minutes um, and just to... Um, uh, to, uh, to remember Servita and um, to show our politicians that um, we, uh, we will not tolerate any more procrastination on this issue, that we want action now. I was a very naive girl. I used to believe that, you know, women should have been given, should not have abortions. I was completely and totally wrong. Years ago in Ireland, we used to prosecute people that might have been mentally ill for, and we used to lobotomize them. Years ago, we used to discriminate pe against people. What's going on now and in this modern age where we live in apparently an area of internet, in information and technology, we do nothing more but to treat people like second-class second citizens. People deserve better than this. This woman deserved better than this. She lost her life. But I can almost say this isn't the first life that has been lost. There have been illegal abortions in the back streets of Ireland for years, and there still are, and women are dying. Something does need to be done for it, and it's fantastic that so many people are here in support of it. And this isn't just a female issue. This is a male issue. This is a female issue. This is... Oh, that makes me feel nice. <laughs> this is an issue for families. Now, I don't know what I would do if I was in the situation where I might have needed an abortion. But I want, if I ever have children, I want my children or my children's partners to have the right to safe, legal abortions in this country. Enough is enough. We deserve better as a populace, both men and women, all families, Everyone, thank you. <laughs>